Assalamu alaikum. Hello, kids. How are you today? Are you ready for the next story? Insha'Allah, I am going to tell you the story of Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam today. Are you ready, children? Now listen carefully. A long time had passed since the death of Prophet Uzair alayhi salam and the children of Israel reverted to their characteristics of stirring mischief amongst each other. They claimed Allah was stingy and that Allah withheld from them. These claims are the direct opposite of Allah's generosity. Bani Israel considered themselves to be the chosen people of Allah above other races in direct contradiction of the teachings of racial equality in Islam. During this time, there lived amongst Bani Israel a man by the name of Imran. He was so renowned for his piety that his was considered to be one of the best families of all time. He was not a prophet or a messenger, but his household was so noble and elevated in Allah's kingdom that there is even an entire chapter in the Qur'an named after it. Imran had a pious wife, and her sister was married to Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam. The Qur'an does not provide accounts of Prophet Zakaria's alayhi salam childhood or youth. Hence, the story of Zakaria alayhi salam begins in his late adulthood, when he was elderly. He was a prophet and messenger of Bani Israel. He is a direct descendant of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam was a carpenter and led a simple life. The prophet was constantly in a state of gratitude to Allah and was intensely humble in his demeanor. Like Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he and his wife had already reached an extreme old age without having any children. Meanwhile, the wife of Imran, his sister-in-law, gave birth to Maryam alayhi salam and she pledged to dedicate Maryam alayhi salam towards pure servitude to Allah. Shortly after the birth of Maryam alayhi salam, her father Imran passed away. This sparked off a dispute within Bani Israel on her guardianship. Zakaria alayhi salam should have been the obvious choice. He was her uncle by marriage and moreover was a prophet whose moral character and piety were beyond question. But, true to their character, Bani Israel disputed this choice, for they wanted the prestige of raising Imran's daughter. The people eventually agreed that they should cast lots to decide the matter. All the candidates wrote down their names on pens and put them in a container. A child was sent to pick one at random. The pen that was selected bore Zakaria alayhi salam's name. Dissatisfied at the outcome, some of them asked for the cast to be repeated. This time, the claimants put all their pens in the river. The pen that would swim against the current would win the guardianship. Again, it was the pen of Zakaria alayhi salam that won. Still stubborn and quarrelsome, they demanded a third round. This time, they decided that whichever pen swam with the current would win the cast. Yet again, it was only Zakaria's alayhi salam pen that differed from the rest, swimming with the current. Observe the power of Allah. 
people may plot and plan, but what is written will take place. Thus, Bani Israel had no choice but to acknowledge that Zechariah was entitled to assume the guardianship of Maryam Maryam grew up as a righteous woman. From her childhood, she was in a state of prayer, positioned in seclusion away from the people, in an enclosure within Bayt al-Maqdis, specially built for her. There were some strange things going on. Every time the Prophet, as her guardian checked on her, always found her surrounded by an abundance of food, This was not food that he brought for her. So how did it find its way into her private sanctuary? More strangely, the fruits did not belong to the climate as well. He asked her where it was from, and she replied that it was from Allah. Witnessing these miracles repeatedly only reaffirmed the Prophet's faith in Allah. Like his ancestor, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had always yearned for a child to continue the legacy of prophethood. But his wife was unable to bear children. He did not want children to inherit his wealth, but rather a son who would continue spreading the message and knowledge of Islam. Encouraged by the miracles he had witnessed, he prayed with utmost conviction to Allah. Before long, Allah responded to his prayer. One day, when the Prophet was in prayer, the angels arrived bearing the good news in his prayer chamber. They told him that his wife's barrenness had been cured, and they were to have a son who would also become a prophet. You must name your son Yahya, said the angels. Moreover, The son had the honor of being named by Allah himself with a name that had never existed in mankind's history. Nevertheless, the prophet was astounded by the news and he burst out, My Lord, how will I have a boy when I have reached old age and my wife is barren? The angel said, Such is Allah. He does what he wills. The Prophet continued, My Lord, make for me a sign. To this, the angels replied, Your sign is that you will not be able to speak to the people for three days except by gesture. And remember your Lord much, and exalt him with praise in the evening and in the morning. True to Allah's promise, his wife soon delivered a son, and he was named Yahya alayhi salam. His son Yahya alayhi salam grew up and became a prophet as well. I shall tell you the story of Yahya alayhi salam in the next episode. But to summarize it, Yahya alayhi salam was brutally murdered. Imagine the heartbreak that Zakaria alayhi salam must have felt. Yahya alayhi salam was the ideal son, for not only was he an exceptionally devoted servant to Allah, but he was also kind and generous to his parents. When Yahya alayhi salam was murdered, there was crisis among Bani Israel. According to reports, emboldened by the murder of Yahya alayhi salam, Bani Israel decided to turn against his father too. A mob, bent on hatred and destruction, set out to kill Zakaria alayhi salam. Such was their arrogance and disbelief that they were willing to murder their own prophets. The old prophet managed to flee. With Allah's will, a tree opened its trunk and allowed the Prophet to hide inside and then wrapped him up. However, the shaitan pulled a fragment of the Prophet's clothes through the crack, 
thus exposing him. According to some reports, the pursuers initially wanted to set the tree on fire, but then decided instead to saw the tree in half along with the prophet in it. This was how his life abruptly ended, by the evil hands of the very people he was trying to guide. Did you like the story, kids? If you liked it, then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification icon to keep updated on all our videos. Insha'Allah, I will tell you the story of Prophet Yahya alayhi salam in the next episode. That's all for today. Goodbye.